Greetings, Scotty Reed here with a Black Talk Radio news commentary and report. And on this particular report, we're going to take a look at what's really going on in Syria. Well, the short answer is you're looking at the unraveling of the Obama administration's regime change plans for Syria in trying to overthrow the government of Syria, which is uh, the president is uh, Assad. And what we're seeing now going on in Syria is the unraveling of that regime change plan that started back during the Obama administration. Um, so there's a couple of things here that I want to uh, cover, a couple of screenshots that I feel like provide vital information. And also, it looks like the Syrian Kurds are taking my advice that I put out on social media weeks ago and saying what they should do if they worried about these Turkish in this Turkish invasion and an impending genocide as we hear the mainstream media pontificate on that um, is they need to go back to the alliance they had pre the Western attempt that's the UK and the US government attempt to overthrow Syria they need to go back to the agreement or arrangement they had with the Syrian government, where the Syrian government pretty much uh, granted them autonomy in the north, pretty much let them govern themselves, and they were operating that way in peace for a very long time. That's why you haven't seen any reports of Kurds attacking the Syrian army or trying to overthrow the Syrian government. Um, what the Kurds have been focused on, so we've been told, is ISIS, okay? But who exactly is ISIS? And is there a difference between uh, jihadist terrorists and the so-called Syrian Democratic Forces? And I think I have some evidence that comes from the mainstream media to show that there's really no difference. But let's take a look at this first screenshot um, for those that are not able to see the screen because you're listening to the audio version of this podcast i'll just read it to you so it comes from a blue check mark on twitter um i don't recall if this person is a reporter or anything like that but he got a blue check mark um breaking the syrian democratic forces officially confirmed they are letting the size troops into their territory in a bid to stop the turkish onslaught now, here's what's funny about this. These are a bunch of Western back, uh, MI6, CIA, Pentagon back group trying to overthrow the Syrian government. And they're talking about we're going to let the Syrian government onto our territory. That's not their territory. Okay, so it's something just wrong with even framing it that way. But also, let's take a look at another tweet that came out that I think gives some important information that a lot of people are simply ignoring. And this person, Jesse Jane Duff. Now, she is a Marine veteran and she works for the Trump administration. But it, it, what we need to examine is what she's putting out and if she's telling the truth. Because we know the Trump administration and Trump himself lies about many, many of things. But that should not get you to automatically dismiss what they're saying. You have to do your own research. Anyway, so Jesse Jane Duff got the blue check mark. Says, yes, we are not authorized by Congress to be in a combatant position against Turkey. We were sent to Syria by Obama to advise Syrian defense forces and Kurds against ISIS, not sent there for combat. Our forces have zero national security reasons to be there and potentially die in combat. Now, there's some truth to that. Now, if the so-called resistance... Y'all want to call her Nancy Pelosi or anybody else that's using that term or that label, the resistance. If they're so concerned about the Kurds, why hasn't Congress came into session and put forth a resolution authorizing the Trump administration to, to go to war against their NATO ally, Turkey? Okay? So all those people that that saying, "Oh, Trump is giving him the green, giving them the green light in this." What did y'all want them to do? What do y'all want Trump to do? To let those U.S. soldiers who are supposed to only be advisors 
okay, only they're supposed to be advising in a and not a combat role. What do you want them to do? Just stay there and get killed and be hum, as human shields for Turkey? Is that is that what you want? Is that what you're telling me that that's what what y'all think about U.S. troops? And I am a veteran. Um, and I actually do care about the troops and, and tired of them being used as pawns. But if that's what you're arguing for. You're arguing, first of all, y'all say that Trump, and I agree, is violating the U.S. Constitution, but many administrations have violated the U.S. Constitution in these matters of war. But y'all saying that he's violating the U.S. Constitution, so we must have impeached him. But here you're arguing that he violated the U.S. Constitution and sacrificed some U.S. troops. There's no, there's no authorization from Congress. There's no declaration of war on Turkey. So you're being hypocrites. You're just being hypocrites here, okay? So let's be consistent. Now, here's a map that I want you to look at. This map comes from the BBC. This map shows Kurdish forces, which is in the north, in the, and that's the blue. Then you got the Turkey-backed Syrian rebels who are trying to overthrow the Syrian government. They're in the red. Then you got the quote-unquote jihadist terrorists. They're in the yellow. Then you got the Syrian rebels that have been armed by the CIA and the Pentagon, and they're in the orange. And then you got the Syrian government, which is in the green, which covers most of your map. But for those that can see the video version of this podcast, if you look up to the uh, left-hand upper corner where you see all that yellow that says jihadists, then in the middle of that yellow, what do you see? You see, quote-unquote, Syrian rebels, right? So why aren't we seeing any reports about Syrian rebels backed by the U.S. government or the U.K. government being surrounded by jihadists and they're going to be slaughtered by these jihadists. You haven't seen no reports like that. I haven't seen no reports like that. Well, I have seen reports over the years that we've been there and this has been going on is that the jihadists and the Syrian rebels are one and the same. They're one and the same. Okay? So that's pretty interesting that the BBC um, will put out such a map because I guess they know people aren't going to really look at it and critically think about it and ask questions. So I'm asking the question, why are Syrian rebels embedded with jihadists according to, to this map? Okay? And on this map, you see that, that most of the jihadists is bordering Turkey. Now, let's, let me ask you the question. Okay, so ISIS is supposed to be these Muslims who have flown in from all over the world, th by the thousands, right, going through airports and, and what have you, to go to Syria uh, to set up a, um, a caliphate or what have you. Now, how have they been armed? How have they been supplied? Where are they getting their ammunition and their food and, and resupplies from? Where, how and where? Well, some of the pictures that you look at, you will see that they're carrying AR-6, I mean, excuse me, um, M16s, which are made by U.S. weapons manufacturers. Well, they could be getting them from Turkey, and I would say that Turkey is the one who's been supplying these jihadists. Because that's the only land country that they're border bordering them. What you mean to tell you mean to tell me ISIS has an air force that's air dropping in supplies? How have these people been able to survive all these years without a state government backing them? I've seen reports that Turkey has been supplying these terrorists. Israel and Saudi Arabia have been supplying these terrorists. Again. If you look at this map, you see all of this yellow, which represents the jihadists, surrounding the orange, that's the Syrian rebels. But you ain't heard no reports that the Syrian rebels are besieged by ISIS. You, you ain't seen it. So what I'm asking you to do is just uh, 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 simply use your brain and critically think about these things before you just jump up 
and believe what you hear from the mainstream media. You got a whole bunch of ex-CIA operatives and, and the security state operatives. These people train a lot. They train to be deceptive. And I guess the mainstream media is a natural transition to them. Again, corporate media in the U.S. is basically state propaganda TV as well. You got to know that these corporations belong to have parent corporations and they might have some making money off of war. Okay. Now, Assad told them a long time ago, look, don't don't get in bed with these you with the United States. They, they not going to be there for you when you need them and what have you. So here's a video of Assad telling them that. And I'm going to read the subtitles because he's speaking in his native tongue. The U.S. will not protect you. The U.S. will not place you either. التي يحملها وهو بدأ بالمقايضة إذا لم تحضروا أنفسكم للدفاع عن بلدكم وللمقاومة فلن تكونوا سوى عبيد عند العثمان لن يحميكم سوى دولتكم لن يدافع عنكم سوى الجيش Okay, let's stop it there. Basically, what he was telling the Kurds, I don't know how old this video is. It's don't get in bed with with the Western governments. They not going to be there for you when they need you. They not going to be there for you when when the Ottoman Empire, the Turks, attack you and try to make you their slaves. So again, if you do your research and been paying attention and not just, you know, going to mainstream corporate media, um spook TV and getting your information, then you would know these things. You would know these things, okay? And so what's happening? Like I said a couple of weeks ago, if the Kurds don't want to be slaughtered, they just need to go back to their arrangement with the Syrian government. And lo and behold, this week, the Syrian army is on the march to go help them Kurds repel the Syrian, I mean, the invasion of Syria. Okay? So all of this is a racket. It's a scam. It's about making war profits. It's not about freedom and democracy for no Kurds and, and what have you. The Kurds been operating, the Syrian Kurds been operating with autonomy in Syria for, for a very, very long time, getting along with the Syrian government. All right. So years ago in the 1930s, you had a Marine general say and a Medal of Honor winner named Smedley Butler say, uh, Smedley Butler say War is a racket. It is possibly the oldest, easily the most profitable, surely the most vicious. It is the only one international in scope. It is the only one in which the profits are reckoned in dollars and the losses in lives. A racket is best described, I believe, as something that is not what it seems to be to the majority of people. Only a small inside group knows what it's really about. It is conducted for the benefit of the very few at the expense of the very many. Out of war, a few people make huge fortunes. And again, this is a quote from uh, 1935 uh, Major General Smut Smetley D. Butler of the U.S. Marine Corps. Okay, so don't take it from me. Take it from somebody who know. Okay. War is a racket. It's all about profit. It ain't just about oil, but it's also about profit from, from bullets and bombs and rifles and tanks and all of that kind of stuff. So stop allowing the spooks in the mainstream media get you all hyped up. To, oh, the poor Kurds, he going to get the Kurds killed and all this and that. The Kurds don't have to die, and they not going to die because they finally didn't come to their senses and stop aligning with the enemy of the the legal government in that country. All right? So anyway, as I say, always do your own research. Don't listen to me. Don't listen to them. Okay? I can point you in the right direction. I'm not going to lie to you because I don't have any corporate sponsors. I'm not looking to make money from uh, any of these corporations. So I, I don't have no reason 
to lie to you, okay? So, with that said, please continue to support the nonprofit media efforts of the Black Talk Media Project. You can make a tax deductible donation today, and I stress tax deductible. Peace and blessings to all.